Okay, so we are... This must be the loser bracket, then? Because it's all the way on the side? Yeah, I imagine it's the loser bracket. And we have ETN against PDF. That fight next. Oh, I see. We Dogs does not play for a while. I see. Okay, so there's a winner loser bracket, and we got. Um, this is the first round of the loser bracket, and semifinals will be after. Quarterfinals is playing right now against PDF ETN, and We Eat Dogs is playing the winner of that for semifinals, and then. Whoever wins that plays the winner of the loser bracket. This is my guess. Man, Sully likes lumber now. It's just playing lumber all day. <laughs> Maybe lumber is just broken. Arthur. Arthur, I know this character. This one spins to win. It's, it's just Garen. It's Garen. Yeah. Errol. Errol sounds familiar too. I don't remember what they do though. Possibly no. Yeah, we'll stick to the high high scale. I mean macro scale. <laughs> All right. Oof, it's getting hot though. Hot. Do you know how hot it is here right now? Give me. Give yes, me I know. It's very hot. <laughs> right now we have. 36 degrees. Oh, yeah. 36 <laughs> degrees, 39 real feel. That does not sound good at all. Oh boy. Alright, Lubu, Finnick, Durek, Errol, Arthur, Lumber. Didn't AMS and UDC play already? Yeah, that was the first game that I joined, right? When I streamed it through somebody else's stream. I think they were uh, not. They did not start then. They were just testing, I guess. I mean, yeah. I, I'm actually not sure. Remember, I joined the last half of the game. I'm pretty sure it was UDC against AMS. Maybe I remember it was AMS for sure. Yeah, then it was UDC because I remember it was UDC was the first one I watched. So combining those two pieces of knowledge together. We come to the ground truth. Why don't you just check the the, the roster, the thingy? <laughs> yeah, it was UDC. AMS. Yeah, and now it's it's AMS against UDC. Okay, so I just remembered that we joined at the end and AMS got um, wiped pretty hard. Yeah, but it could be the door just today, you know, like. But um... maybe it's a second chance. You never know. You change your gameplay, you win. It's all that matters. Yeah. They're just warming up. That's why now they're going to destroy it. Yeah. Notice how like the the players that no, not the players the teams that have been playing well so far have been the ones that have been there's like very little laning. Like we eat dog. They've been like doing maybe I want to say like twenty five percent laning, and then the rest of the time they're roaming. Like they're just ganking. So it's a very different yeah. meta in this game. Um, usually in some of the other games, uh, laning means a lot more because you get a lot more money, um, you get a lot more control. The map is probably a bit bigger, it takes a bit longer to travel. Um, but in this one, like you see that uh, like traditional laning doesn't actually get you very far um, when you're up against people that are like that play like weed dogs. Okay. Violet, Zill, Durak, Ishar, Arthur, Fennec, Errol, Diao Chan. Oh, I know Diao Chan because Anihi mains Diao Chan. And I played Diao Chan for a little bit. She's an ice caster. No, oh, that's a garbage guy. And Winter will love this. She's pink. Oh, really? And a pink hype? Oh, God, that is this. Yep. So she's like a lot of CC AoE. Um, and she's a caster, so she'll be mid lane. Uh, Arthur will be top lane, Fennec will be the jungle, Ishar is their support, Errol is their ADC. Uh, over here we got support lumber, uh, jungle zill, I don't know what this butterfly thing is. 
Uh, I'm guessing Violet is mid. I think Violet is uh, a cat. Uh, is like a blondie on the world. She looks so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Alright. Um... Yeah, so Diochan is really interesting. Well, I mean, at least because I like ice casters. Like pretty much any game I play, ice casters. Anyone that knows me will uh, will know that. Yeah, like your name is Pyrex. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. She's got AOE freeze. She's got AOE slows, and just big damages. So. She can do a lot, but she's very squishy too, so. Oh, let's <laughs> check it out. Gonna be... This game okay, might be more okay. interesting. Oh, Sully, what are you doing just standing there? Okay. Oh, is it? Okay, so we got Blue, we got Lubu, we got uh, Zill um, guarding that. Learned their lessons from last time against We Eat Dogs. Uh, we got. Ooh, look at that. That's why you never. You never. Face check a bush. You don't know who's there. Ooh, Diao Chan's moving mm -hmm. down for a gank, but Ishar is kind of far behind for the gank. Um, Lumbar sees all of that. So they're going to do well here. Uh, what do we got here? We got Arthur's being pushed back quite a bit by Lubu. Yeah, see that? That that minion turned like all icy. That's a freeze. So if she lands that on somebody... Um, they're pretty screwed. Wow, so nice. Okay, there's no jungle contesting this game, which is a little bit of a relief for both teams, I think, because I'm pretty sure they're tired of being destroyed in their jungles. <laughs> um, okay, oh, we got, like, full team. Oh, look, UDC, look at this grouping. Look at this grouping. Look what they did. They changed their gameplay. Look, they're all moving. Their entire team is here. The only problem is that they didn't catch anyone out. Um, so now Arthur can farm a little bit solo. But uh, here we got a 4-on-4 four four bottom lane. This is interesting. So I think each team has, has kind of changed the way they've played, uh, which is kind of interesting to see. I mean, like, very different from when they first started, where I saw a lot more laning and a lot more splitting than before. So here, oh, Team AMS, full team gathering mid. They're going to try and screw over the Zill, I think. The counter gank. Oh, yeah, both teams are a lot more cautious now. Well, do you blame them? <laughs> nope. <laughs> but, I mean, it's not terrible. Oh, no, Lubu. What? Oh, okay. If Lubu went in to try and challenge that, he could have been screwed by the entire team. But here we have our uh, Violet. Oh, yes, I remember. Rattlegore is playing this person who can change her shot to, like, missiles and stuff. She kind of plays a little bit like Jinx from League of Legends. Why oh, so cute. Yeah, so she's the ADC. Uh, she's got a long shot that can like really harass somebody. I remember it was it was really stupid when I tried it. It's just from really far away, you can just keep poking them and force them to go back. So right now, the entire AMS team is kind of congregating a bit too much. They're roaming a lot, but they're not getting anything for it. This Yao Chan's trying to catch somebody out. And the entire team... Oh, wait. They started the dragon, and then they let the dragon go. Probably because of the pressure that they're applying here. Each team is very scared to go in. But again, they're split again. See, Team team UDC is starting that split again. No unified vision. And now we get Sully cut out. Oh, but he's getting... Oh, he got out. Oh, the squishy is moving too far forward. Wait, what is that? Oh, first blood. Look at that. UDC counter ganking. Look at that. Okay, is that a team wipe? Two more? Nope. Well, they they should rush either the tower down there or the dragon. I would probably get the dragon, or I would try to. What I would do is also try to stagger their team. See here, Lubu is probably thinking about that. You want to stagger the spawns so that the team doesn't move together. It's very easy to desync the team, and it's usually very non-intuitive uh, in most games or any game to kind of resync with your team, which requires you to actually just wait you should just not do anything and just wait for your team to go because um, going in one at a time is a lot easier for five people to kill one person at a time rather than five fighting five at a time 
Um, so here we still have immense pressure from UDC on bottom lane, and Team AMS is kind of late to respond to that. They were kind of just like running around, maybe they wanted to lane again. Um, but I think it's really important that what they need to do is you need to respond to the pressure, or you need to apply your own pressure and make them decide what to do. So here we got a fight at the blue buff. Uh, UDC gets that. They Team AMS just gave that up for free. They had a 4-on-4 four four there, and they just gave it up for free. That's, um, odd. Maybe it's just fear. Maybe they didn't really... Oof. Yeah, it, most likely it is fear, and probably a lack of confidence in their thing. So you see there, like, one person was defending at the tower, the rest of them were, like, kind of just sitting in the back at the other tower, rather than helping defend the tower that was being under attack. So AMS lost a lot of ground for that. Oof, oof, that big Lazar. They're firing the Lazar. Okay, this is that? What? <laughs> I that joke. Okay, so Zill is just free farming all the jungles. Will they catch... Th oh, Zill walked in without knowing. Or did he know? Wow, he's taking them all on? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think Zill knew about that. Uh, that was kind of a risky face check with his dash. If you were going to do that, I would probably... Like, if you didn't know, I would have walked through the bush to find out who's there. And then use the dash in as, a, as an escape. You only dash in if you think you're going to kill and you're going to get out. You don't use your escape to uh, jump in. But, I mean, I like the idea that he's fighting to maintain control of the jungles. He's keeping them on their toes. Notice how Team AMS is now all together just to defend their jungle getting the blue buff. Okay, they're all grouping up. They got the dragon. One guy, see, Lubu's all the way in the team, and the rest of the team was about to back out already. And they lost Lubu for free. Wow, the entire team just got wiped from AoEs, though. Holy. Okay, so it looks like Team UDC has an assassin, a lot of AoE um, units, at least a lot of AoE damage. And that AoE damage is really punishing Team AMS for being grouped up together when they're fighting. Uh, team AMS should have a lot of ranged units, though. I mean, like, Diao Chan shouldn't have been in the middle of that, if she could have. Um, something like Arthur should have been at the forefront. Because um, Arthur doesn't have... I know that Arthur doesn't have any real stun or CC. Only, like, a slow, I think. Um, but he's really tanky. So he should be the one forefronting. Like, the way we saw Lumber walk in to draw fire, that's exactly what Arthur is supposed to be doing. Like... He has something that closes gaps. He's a sprint. That's what he should be doing. He should be sprinting in, drawing their fire, and then bringing them to the team. And like that, basically AMS needs to, when they engage battle, they need to be spread out when they engage battle. So they can't be attacking from one spot. They need to spread out around them and attack. And Garen is supposed to be the enabler for that. And we have Rattle Gore, the Violet, just free farming the bottom lane while their team just harasses them. Yeah, so look look here. What we have, their entire team is mid, defending mid, while their, the rest of UDC is all in the bottom jungle, holding them back from defending the bottom lane. So Violet's able to free farm and push the lane at the same time uh, without any, like, th there's nothing that Team AMS is doing about it. Like right now, they're they're coming back to try and defend it and just clear the waves. And then because they know that the team, they drew them all bottom lane, you see that they all went to Dark Slayer in here. Now that they are all Dark Slayer, they get this for free because the other team, they know they had to run all the way across. For sure, they'll see them on their way. And best case, the other team doesn't even know that they got it, which clearly they didn't know. So at this point, Team AMS should be taking the dragon. They should have taken dragon. Like, at least... You can't just let somebody have a huge free trade like that without doing anything about it. You have to minimize the losses when that would have been taking Dragon and then ganking them after. So if you're on AMS right now and you want to try to to somehow make a comeback here, what are you trying to do? Minimize losses, try to catch up by getting gold. Um, here, they're being caught out at the end. Notice how they're they're kind of being forced to run down a line. Because they, 
they're they're not really grouping up properly. Uh, not not really grouping up properly, but more like they're just not. They don't know what they want to do. I think is the problem. Hmm. So what they need to know is what they want to defend, what they need to defend. Um, well, I don't think that's that important. I don't think they need to defend that though. Yeah, it, I don't know what the main base is. The main base is just um, it's like a, a side objective, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but the, um, like I think the the biggest loss there at the very end was that they they all went down, so they're off towers, off objectives. They wanted to try and gank the dragon, like them coming to dragon, but instead they probably should have just all grouped up, hit the dragon, and then ganked them, or gone back and defended. And then that way they wouldn't be caught out, is one thing, because on their way back, or on their way to the gank, they all got caught out. So basically what happened, the chain fear reaction happened, is that one of them got caught, and was taking damage, and then the other ones all got scared, and they started running away without doing anything about it. And then at some point, Arthur decided to go back to try and save them because they're the tank and try to draw some fire. So they ended up losing a squishy, losing Arthur, um, and then only having three people to defend against the middle tower, losing the middle tower very quickly, and then ultimately they just lost their base. Um, so I think that was like the biggest thing that um, went wrong was just being caught out at the end uh, when they wanted to try to do like a counter gank. Um, that's probably the biggest thing. Like, typically when you're on the losing side, you're trying to draw things out and try to catch up. You want to force them to, um, be idle, trying to figure out what to do. Hmm. Uh, or you counter whatever they're trying to do, so that whatever they try to do, you slow it down. Or you, for example, you can steal Slayer, like what Flying General did in that other game. Like, that was a huge move, like, right? Because their entire team gets gold, they get the dragon... It buys them time to try and catch up, but um, but yeah, but that wasn't a bad game, I'd say. I think it was just like a couple of mistakes, and because it's such a fast-paced game, those couple of mistakes just cost you a lot. Yeah, it really looks like this game has a real strong positive feedback loop. Like if you're winning, you're gonna keep winning, and if you're losing, you're kind of flubbernucked. I would say that it's not so much that, it's more that it's so fast-paced and it was that the same mistakes kept happening. Mm -hmm. um, so that it just makes it very hard to... Um, it is hard to catch back up. Mm -hmm. Unless okay. you change what you were doing. Yeah. Stop. Nelly like the 
Gotta keep it loose I don't even know why I would get that drunk Leave me alone